Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfect Snails, where medicine makes perfect sense. We continue our playlist called Pulmonology. In the previous video, we started talking about restrictive lung diseases. Hypersensitivity pneumonitis is a restrictive lung disease. Example, farmer's lung. With that being said, now let's get started. How do you know if the patient's symptoms are related to the lung? Cough and dyspnea. And this gives you one of five probabilities or classes of probabilities. One, obstructive lung disease. Two, restrictive lung disease. Three, pulmonary vascular abnormality. Four, infections. Five, malignancy. What do restrictive lung diseases have in common? All of them. You cannot get the air in. Your lungs are restricted from filling. And my analogy is the socks with very strong rubber band and then you put it in the laundry washing machine and it shrinks even more. This is a very restricted socks. Translation, you cannot get the air in. It's very hard to expand this socks. But once you leave it, it's going to recoil on itself easily. In restrictive lung disease, you have decrease in all lung volumes and capacities. FEV1, FVC ratio is normal or increased. This is how you diagnose a restrictive lung disease, which is step number one. Step number two is to determine the severity of the restrictive lung disease. You do this based on the TLC. The lower the TLC, the more severe the restriction. Two types of restrictive lung disease. Extrinsic, it's not the lung's fault. Intrinsic, it is the lung's fault. Intrinsic lung disease include the hypersensitivity pneumonidities. Restrictive lung disease are divided into extrinsic and intrinsic. Extrinsic, it's not the lung's fault. It could be the thoracic wall's fault, neuromuscular, diaphragm, pleura, or even abdomen. Intrinsic is divided into two main groups. Number one, diffuse parenchymal lung disease. The problem is in the interstitial. Here is one alveolus. Here is the other alveolus. Between them, there is an interstitial tissue or interstitial space, which contains soft connective tissue. Any problem in this tissue in between is called interstitial lung disease or diffuse parenchymal lung disease or it could be non-interstitial translation it could be inside the alveoli including alveolar proteinosis and anti-glomerular basement membrane antibody also known as good pasture syndrome then the parenchymal lung disease is divided into three main categories number one occupational and environmental two idiopathic interstitial pneumonia and three others Let's talk about number one, occupational and environmental. We have three subtypes, hypersensitivity pneumonitis, organic dust induced interstitial lung disease and inorganic dust induced. Hypersensitivity pneumonitis is today's topic and it has many subtypes, not just four, but here are four common examples. Farmer's lung, bird fancier's lung, chemical worker's lung, miller's lung, coffee maker's lung. Hypersensitivity pneumonitis also has extrinsic allergic alveolitis. Pneumonitis is singular, pneumonidides is the plural, and as Dr. Golian said, pneumonidides is a great name to name your daughter after. Okay, it's like, she's going to be miserable and she's going to be allergic to everything. Let's digest that. Hypersensitivity, so you might say, oh, it's related to allergies. Yes, indeed. And it's called allergic. Duh. Alveolitis. Itis means inflammation. And again, pneumonitis because it's related to inflammation. And the story goes like this. You inhale a known organic antigen. And this is different from idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis because in idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, it's called idiopathic. So it has an unknown antigen. But hypersensitivity, there is known organic antigen. Lean to inflammatory response in the alveoli and small airway. Antigen. Then sensitization. T helper lymphocyte. Activate the B lymphocyte. Secreting IgG. And this will lead to immune response. Hypersensitivity pneumonitis is not related to IgE. It's not a hypersensitivity reaction type 1. And it's not related to eosinophilia. Pathogenesis. First exposure, antigen, you're sensitized. IgG antibodies, thank you very much. Second exposure, faster and stronger. IgG antibodies plus the antigen they form, which is a type 3 hypersensitivity reaction. Those immune complexes lead to inflammatory response in the alveoli and small airways. Chronic exposure, you'll form a non-caseating granuloma, which is a type 4 hypersensitivity reaction, also known as delayed hypersensitivity. Related to some occupations, farmers, carpenters, bird owners, tobacco growers, industrial workers, machine operators, sauna takers, hot tub users, even Starbucks lovers and Microsoft Windows users. The last two were sarcasm, go figure. Antigens include, could be fungal, 
bacterial or mycobacterial bird derived chemicals or wood coffee so i was not entirely joking mold etc moldy hay is going to be extremely important when you talk about farmer's lung a subtype of hypersensitivity pneumonitis examples of hypersensitivity pneumonitis farmer's lung bird fancier's lung chemical workers lung miller's lung cheese washers lung coffee makers lung tobacco growers lung sauna takers lung even hot tub lung humidifier fever machine operators lung suberosis summer type pneumonitis wood workers lung turkey handling disease poultry workers lung pituitary snuff takes lung fish meal workers lung and i've told you in the previous video that the restrictive lung diseases are more than 100 so here are the four most important subtypes for your exam hypersensitivity mice farmer's lung bird fancier's lung or bird keeper's lung bagasosis chemical workers lung isn't this the name of the horse in the cartoon hercules made by disney Exposure to, if it's farmer's lung, fungal antigens such as silage, grain, and please don't forget the moldy hay. Bird keeper's lung, bird feather, and droppings. Don't confuse this with bat droppings because bat droppings are related to histoplasmosis. Good job. Bagasosis is sugar cane. Chemical worker's lung, paint, varnish, polyurethane, and foam, etc. Antigen, if it's farmer's lung, it's the ugly thermophilic actinomycetes, or it could be the aspergillus. Bird keeper's lung, proteins derived by parakeets and pigeons. Pegasosis, again, the ugly thermophilic actinomycetes. And then the chemical worker's lung, the antigen here is isocyanates, a chemical compound. Lung pathology, you have emphysema with farmer's lung, fibrosis with bird keeper's lung, in other words, they could be restrictive or obstructive lung disease. Clinically, hypersensitivity pneumonitis is divided into acute, subacute, and chronic acute. You have fever, chills, malaise. Start four to eight hours after exposure to the antigen. So the question will mention a farmer, and he was dealing with some moldy hay, and then four hours later, he developed fever, chills, malaise, maybe coughing, respiratory symptoms, dyspnea, etc., etc., etc. Symptoms resolve on their own. It's a self-limiting disease within hours after the patient avoids exposure to the antigen. But as long as the farmer is in contact with the moldy hay, the symptoms will persist, and then you go to the next step. Subacute, ongoing exposure to the antigen. Gradual, it takes weeks. It's not acute. We call it subacute because it's not that acute. And it takes longer to resolve. No kidding. Chronic ongoing exposure to the antigen for even a longer period of time more gradual presentation yeah it's called chronic baby chronic chrono means time it takes freaking time you have progressive dyspnea cough and fatigue do not confuse this with the insurance company or with the political ideology weight loss and clubbing what are the complications of hypersensitivity pneumonitis they may become irreversible leading to lung fibrosis, respiratory failure, and even hypoxemia, which is defined as decreased P small AO2, which is the partial pressure of oxygen in the blood. This is free oxygen. This is oxygen that's not on the hemoglobin. Could be irreversible. It does not resolve even after the removal of antigen, and this is getting bad. Diagnosis clinically, and there is provocation test. You go with the farmer to the moldy hay, expose the farmer to the antigen, and see if he's going to develop the symptoms or not. This is brutal. PFTs, you'll find obstructive or restrictive lung disease, as we've discussed. Chest x-rays, very nonspecific. You'll find recurrent transient infiltrates. There was another disease with recurrent transient infiltrates and eosinophilia. If you say allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis, you're absolutely right, baby. High resolution CT scan will show ground glass. I've told you before that ground glass is going to be repeated a bazillion times with the restrictive lung diseases. Opacity with centrilobular nodules. Traction bronchiectasis because of all of the inflammation and the fibrosis. They are causing traction over those bronchioles and bronchi dilating them. We call this ectasia. Since the ectasia is in the bronchi, we call it bronchiectasia or bronchiectasis. Subplural honeycombing. Please do not ever forget the honeycombing. And it's going to be repeated millions of times in those restrictive lung diseases. Bronchoscopy with a transbronchial biopsy to show non-caseating granuloma that's poorly defined 
and less dense. And here is your key, because this is different from sarcoidosis. In sarcoidosis, you still have a non-caseous granuloma, but it's well-defined and denser. So here is the question for your exam. You have a 39-year-old farmer, and he was working in the field and with the moldy hay, and he went into like a closed room, and it's full of moldy hay. Four hours later, he developed dyspnea and cough and fever and malaise and fatigue. And then you did a transbronchial biopsy to find a non-caseating granuloma that's poorly defined and less dense. What's the diagnosis? This is farmer's lung. If you see a non-caseating granuloma, this is kind of a chronic condition due to chronic exposure. This is not his first time contacting the moldy hay. How to treat hypersensitivity pneumonidides? First, antigen avoidance. Yes, indeed, but it's easier said than done. Because this farmer, it's his only job to take care of the land and of the moldy hay and all of this stuff. You can just like sit on your butt in your air-conditioned office and say, Hey, sir, you should not get in contact with the moldy hay. Okay, what do you expect he's gonna do? He may be like illiterate and cannot read and write. What do you expect he's gonna do if he's gonna um, like quit his job? Compete with Jeff Bezos? Get your head out of your sphincter. Try to feel the patient's pain yourself. And then, only then, you may be able to actually mitigate the effect. Glucocorticoids, if antigen avoidance did not cure it. And lung transplant is last resort when the bleep hits the fan. Clinical pearls, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis has an unknown antigen. But hypersensitivity pneumonitis has a known antigen. If it's called idiopathic, it means we are idiots and we cannot figure out the pathology, so it's an unknown antigen. The exam question will mention a patient who works as a farmer, bird breeder, paint worker, etc. Present with persistent or recurrent pneumonia. Symptoms come and go, they call it waxing and waning. Symptoms come during weekdays when they are in contact with the freaking antigen, but not on weekends when they are not in contact with the antigen. Lung biopsy will show a poorly defined non-caseating granuloma. This is your hypersensitivity pneumonitis case. But please understand, if the patient works on the weekends, he's gonna get the symptoms on the weekends. Like, think, people. So if the patient works Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and his, like, day off is Monday, don't, oh, oh but, but the professor told me that it was called Monday disease. Shut up, it depends on the patient's schedule. That's why you need to take a freaking history. Let's talk about bisinosis. Bisinosis is not immune-related, but let's talk about it because it comes on the exam. This is related to organic dust. So this is not a hypersensitivity pneumonitis. This is an organic dust-induced interstitial lung disease. Go back to my previous slide where I had the big table and you will find it. Or hemp dust, yarns for textile or rope making. The patient will present with dyspnea and chest tightness. Not immune-related, it's not a hypersensitivity pneumonitis, and there is no need for sensitization. Duh, it's not immune-related. Monday chest tightness, as long as the patient starts working on Monday. Symptoms start on the first day of weekdays, disappear on weekends. On Mondays, you'll have decrease FEV1. No wonder, there is dyspnea and there is chest tightness when he is exposed to cotton. So this is gonna decrease the FEV1. Okay, there is, um, like, you know, I live in the United States, so sometimes when I'm driving and I'm bored, I turn on the radio. What a stupid idea to do. And then I hear those ads, and there is a company called Bull & Branch. They make organic sheets for your bed, and they are made of pure 100% organic cotton. Whenever the, I hear this ad, I think, bisinosis, man. And they will mention organic cotton. It's organic cotton, as if this is just like the, the, the best thing that ever happened. Hey, bisinosis is organic dust. And don't worry, guys, I'm not spending $200 on some bed sheets, even if Bill Clinton slept on. Because I'm all about public health, okay? I'm messing with this company. They are good people, I'm sure. I'm just making fun of... Uh, I, I don't know. This is just who I am. Mondays, you'll have chest tightness, dyspnea, and cough. It may cause restrictive most of the time, or obstructive lung disease. Here's another disease that's not a hypersensitivity pneumonitis, called silofer's lung, exposure to nitrogen dioxide in the freaking silo. So nitrogen dioxide is gonna be like this way, I believe. Type one hypersensitivity, immediate type, leading to dyspnea and wheezing. If it's type one hypersensitivity, it's not a hypersensitivity pneumonitis, because the definition of hypersensitivity pneumonitis was 
it's not type 1 related and there is no IgE and there is no eosinophilia if you remember. Sarcoidosis causes two restrictive diseases, restrictive lung disease and restrictive cardiomyopathy. My lungs are restricted from filling and my heart is restricted from filling too. Very quick review, former's lung, hypersensitivity pneumonitis, extrinsic allergic alveolites, known antigen. It's not a type 1 hypersensitivity, it's not related to IgE, there is no eosinophilia. IgG antibodies and T helper lymphocytes can lead to a restrictive lung disease or it could be obstructive. Farmer's lung is a type 3 hypersensitivity, or in chronic cases, it could be type 4, caused by thermophilic actinomycetes, which is the easier name, and here is the actual name, Saccharophilospora rectivergula. Who named these things? I would rather get melanoma. At least my doctor will be able to pronounce it. I'm joking, of course. First exposure, you get the IgGs ready, man, and then the next exposure is going to be stronger and faster. And with chronic exposure, you get a granuloma because it's a type 4 or a delayed type hypersensitivity reaction. Treatment, avoid exposure. Again, easier said than done. And here's a very good solution or a trade-off to be specific. Use a mask, sir. Use a mask. It's not going to like uh, eradicate the problem 100%, but it's going to minimize the exposure. And steroids if step number 1 and 2 failed. And then when the bleep hits the fan, you do a lung transplant. Next, let's review Silofiller's lung, which is not a hypersensitivity pneumonitis. Here is related to exposure to nitrogen dioxide in the freaking silo. When you store grains, you get grain dust, which contains nitrogen dioxide, chronic bronchiolitis, and COPD, obstructive lung disease, or it could be restrictive. It's not a hypersensitivity pneumonitis, and this is an organic toxic dust syndrome. Complications of Silofiller's alveolar damage, hyaline membranes, bronchiolitis, obliterans. Treatment, stay away, steroids right away. Here are very easy three questions. If you cannot answer them correctly, there is no hope for you. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell and smash like. You can follow me on Facebook. I have more than 100 cases there. You can go to patreon.com slash medicosis to get my premium videos, my cases, my post notes, my PDFs and my audio notes and even the slides of this video and every other videos organized in Dropbox links. Again, it's patreon.com slash medicosis. Thank you for watching. This is Medicosis Perfectionalist where medicine makes perfect sense. Until next time, please be safe, stay happy and study hard.